Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Uladu Narpadu. You know, I have so much fun doing these. Really, I like to do it every day, and another episode. I mean, there's plenty of verses to go through. But uh, I find that it takes a couple of days for people to digest each one. And maybe they're not ready for another one, you know, the very next day. So I do about every other day. And uh, now we're getting into some really interesting concepts. So it's worth taking the time to digest them and contemplate them thoroughly. So let's look at today's verse. Although the world which is seen before us and the mind which sees it arise and disappear simultaneously, the world exists and shines only because of the mind. That which is the whole, Purna, and which shines without appearing and disappearing, is the base for the appearance and disappearance of the world and mind. That self alone is the reality. So we've said this many, many times, and you're probably going to hear it again and again here. <laughs> Context determines meaning. So people say, well, what is the meaning of life, Mr. Natural? <laughs> The meaning of life is determined by its context. So if we see the world and the mind as being something separate, and especially as being something separate from ourselves, then the world and the mind are both out of our control, huh? completely just going on like a machine. And especially the world, when seen this way, seems to be overwhelming. It's so complicated and it's so powerful. How can we live happily in a world which seems like any minute it could eat us up? Well. Any minute, something could happen that just destroys all of our peace and tranquility. So this is the uh, meaning which comes from the context of seeing the world as separate. And the same thing with the mind. If the mind is separate from or different from the self, how can we ever control it? Aren't we always going to be subject to stray thoughts? Huh? I just read an article yesterday. They uh, are saying that one third of the population of the world suffers from depression. And what is depression? I've experienced it myself a long time ago, <laughs> but I kind of remember what it was like. And basically, it feels like a loss of control, that you lose control over your life, the world that you live in, your relationships, your mind, your thoughts. Huh? Your own mind betrays you. It starts to think all these negative thoughts in a self-repeating, self-reinforcing circle or cycle, a spiral of negativity. So this depression, this malady, uh, if you look into it, go to its root, you'll find it's due to alienation. There's a word, a special word, anomi, A-N-O-M-I-E. Anomi means alienation from oneself. So people see that they themselves are out of control that there's all of these thoughts in their minds, feelings in their bodies, things happening in their lives that, that they don't want. 
And so this leads to an overwhelming emotional crush. So what is really the root of this problem? It's putting things in the wrong context. Huh? Our first series so many years ago, Matrix Learning, is all about this, about putting things in the correct context so that you understand their true meaning. <laughs> and now we've gotten to the logical end or uh, highest application of that principle, where we're looking at what is the context that we put the whole world in? If the world is something alien, something separate, something other than ourself, then what hope do we have? Isn't it? So this is a different view coming from Maharshi, Ramana Maharshi. And he's saying that the world comes into existence along with the mind simultaneously. Just look, when you wake up in the morning, there you are off in dreamland, and suddenly the alarm goes off and boing, there's the world in the mind, <laughs> just waiting for you. But it doesn't have to be like that. Because once we see that it's not, even though they come into existence together, the world and the mind, the mind is the cause of the world. How is that? Because the mind is the context in which we see the world. It's a set of meanings, abstractions, categories, an ontology, a model, a model of meanings, of semantic tags. But it determines how we see the world. It's a filter, like colored glasses, you know? If we have rose-colored glasses, then we see everything as being beautiful, right? But if we're realists, <laughs> we see that the world is full of suffering and pain and so on and like that. At any rate, the particular set of meanings in our mind determine how we see the world. It's like a filter. And they come into existence simultaneously. Yet, the mind is the cause of the world. Why? Because it gives meaning to the world. But we can go still further. The mind and the world exist in a bigger context, which is our space of awareness. We talked about this right in the beginning of this series, that this space of awareness is the self. Anything that comes into that space, we become aware of it. So just consider for a moment, how big is this space? Huh? The whole universe fits into it. God and everybody <laughs> fits in your space of awareness. Hmm. So what does that make you? See, we get so caught up in the world and all this stuff that's happening, huh? and the mind and all of our thoughts and stuff. But this is all external. This is all not self. Huh? This is all temporary. It comes and goes. It arises and passes away. If not otherwise, every night when we go to sleep, every morning when we wake up, the world goes away and then it comes back again. So who, who are we? Huh? If the whole world comes into existence in our mind, in our space of awareness. Who are we? Think about it. 
there is no difference between my space of awareness and your space of awareness. It's exactly the same. Uh, one space is <laughs> the same as another space. One emptiness is equivalent to another emptiness. There is no difference. There is no boundaries between them. There's no way to tell them apart. They have no characteristics. Uh, one mirror is as good as another mirror. They're all the same. So at the very least, qualitatively, everyone's consciousness is identical. See where this is going? <laughs> and if the whole world is coming out and going back in again to this space of awareness, then what does it mean? That space of awareness is the context for the world. So in other words, we determine the meaning of the world. We determine the nature and quality of the world by the nature and quality of our awareness. Try to understand. Heaven and hell are simply the way we look at things, the way we interpret life, the meaning that we give to the world through the mind, within our awareness. So <laughs> there's no need to be depressed, no need to suffer. Uh, suffering is a choice. Pain is inevitable. But pain simply is the other side of the coin of pleasure. It has to be there. Pain is simply the absence or the covering of pleasure. And when pain goes away, which it will, <laughs> then what's left is only pleasure. Or when ignorance or sleep goes away, What's left is only knowledge or consciousness. So the natural state of every being is this knowledge. Huh? Sat, meaning being. Chit, meaning consciousness. Ananda, meaning pleasure, enjoyment. This is the natural state. When all the coverings are removed, there's no difference between our awareness, my awareness, your awareness, God's awareness. Awareness is awareness. It's just a space. So try to understand what's really going on here. We are actually pure awareness or Brahman. Brahman doesn't mean God in the ordinary sense because the concept of God comes into existence along with the ego and the world. I mean, the ego says, well, well, I didn't create the world. Huh? It's not my fault. <laughs> Everything's so messed up. Huh? It has nothing to do with me. So there must be a God. Yeah, that'll fix it. <laughs> but it doesn't fix it. Because the God that we manufacture is also imperfect. After all, he created all these problems, right? So the real answer is that the self is Brahman. And Brahman is the context, the space of awareness within which the whole world shows up. We get all entangled in the object and we forget the person or the being who is aware of these objects. We get all entangled in the world and we forget about the self. But the self is what gives meaning to the world. The self is what gives existence to the world. The self is 
Brahman. Om Tat Sat, Om Hari Om.